Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today, I'm going to show you how to lay out lines of rivets. Hi, I'm Paul Dye, and today I want to show you a little bit about how we lay out lines of rivets. This is a quiet job. This is just marking stuff up. We're not going to be drilling holes. We're going to be getting ready to drill holes. Now let me start with a little ego boost for all of the home builders out there. Anybody who's building an airplane, even a modern kit, is going to have to draw out lines of rivets, lay those lines out, drill them, and put them together. This little piece I'm holding is, is uh, from my A&P practical test years ago. I had to lay out a 2 inch by 2 inch piece of aluminum onto a 4 inch by 4 inch piece of aluminum, lay out the rivet lines, drill them, and rivet it. And the FAA considers that a complex riveting task. This is about the simplest thing most home builders are ever going to do. So once you've completed your metal airplane, you're going to have a pretty good feeling that you can do it better than most of the A&Ps out there. So let's talk about the simple task of laying out rivets. I think that I'm not going to try and go into all the content of AC43.13 parts A and B because if you dig in there, you will find lots and lots of measurements and formulas about how you space the rivets. That could take us hours. So I'm just going to show you the technique. Once you've determined the spacing you need, how do you nicely lay them out on metal? And it's the key is a fine line sharpie. You want to have a fresh, fine line sharpie to make a nice, thin line so you're, everything's very accurate. So let's just say we want to make two lines of rivets along this sheet, 3 eighths inch from the edge with 3 quarter inch spacing. Start by drawing your, your edge lines and do it very, very accurately. Small dots, small, thin lines. That's how you, how you do it accurate. So here, one pass. Then we'll go 3 eighths here on this edge. You can't do this with a standard magic marker. You also don't want to do it with an etch. A lot of people will, or with a, with a, with a scribing tool, excuse me. You don't want to scribe it because then you're going to add, uh, add stress risers. So now we're going to assume that our first rivet is going to be right here in the corner. That's spot one. And we're just going to take and measure three-quarter inch spacing all the way down with a little tick mark. And you can move the ruler every time or you can think three-quarters of an inch that takes me to there, another three-quarters takes me to there, another three-quarters takes me to there. If you want to lay things out in millimeters, that's okay with me. Everything in most of your drawings are going to be, with most of the kits we see, are going to be in uh, English measurements, however. If you end up with a stray mark, no matter how it got there, put an X through it, make some kind of indication that you don't go drilling, because once you start getting into the drilling process, it's really easy to uh, drill an extra hole that you don't want. Another trick to use if you know why you're just going to drill a few holes and there's other marks on the page or on the, on the piece of metal is to circle the places where you're going to drill and then you know for sure that it's got to be a mark and it's got to be circled. Just don't erase the actual fine point. The next step that you're going to use on this would be to grab your mechanical center punch or whatever center punch you use and put a divot at each one of those rivet spots and now you'll be able to accurately drill those. There is a quicker way to lay things out, and we'll take a look at that on the next part. It's using a rivet fan, and we'll show you that and why we're going to do it if you come over and take a look at this drawing. This is a drawing from Sonics, and I'm not going to pick on Sonics because they do a great job and, and they use good CAD software. It's just that the nature of CAD software nowadays is that if you decide that you need to have a certain rivet spacing and you want to have X number of rivets between a known point with edge distance and another known point with edge distance, you can tell the CAD system to lay those rivets out and it gives you a nice straight. And then you say, what are the dimensions between that? And the CAD system will go in and it'll tell you the, tell you the dimensions. And it ends up with something like this. 1 and 31 64ths, 2 and 31 64ths, 3 and 31 64ths. There, 
you're figuring it out, they're an inch apart. But trying to measure 31 64ths over and over again is very, very tricky because the width of an ultra-fine Sharpie line is about one and a half sixty-fourths of an inch. So you don't get very precise. So there's an easier way to do that, and, to, and that's to use a rivet fan. So a rivet fan is a clever little device which always maintains the exact, exact same distance between these holes, um, or the exact same uh, distance between consecutive holes. So as you move this, the spacing gets bigger, but the, but the holes remain constant spacing apart. So what you can do is simply measure the first hole, measure for the last hole, and then we'll go over back to our demonstration spot and show you how you can get an equal number of holes in between. So this drawing calls for one, two, three, four rivets in between the endpoints for six rivets total. So let's go lay that out. Here's a piece of Sonic's uh, elevator skin or rotavator skin. I'm going to put a little block in there just so it's easier to, uh, to keep it stiff. And I'm just going to arbitrarily uh, make some endpoints. Um, just in keeping spirit with the thing, I'm going to make it 1 and 3 64ths for the start point. And then we'll come back here from the other end and we'll measure that as, uh, as uh, oh, we'll make that uh, about uh, 1 and and 17 or no, or 37 64, something odd. Doesn't make any difference what it is. We actually want to have a line from our from our edge. So let's make that our three eighths of an inch, just to give us a nice edge distance. We'll mark that line, nice parallel to the edge. And we'll transfer those first marks. I know that's not very precise, but they're arbitrary anyways. All right, now we're going to drill those two holes, punch it, punch it. This is where the form block in there uh, really shines. Air And now, we'll take two Clicos, Clico pliers, we pin the rivet fan in with one, and then we want to have four in between, so one, two, three, four, so we want to have the Clico in the fifth hole, and we'll go and put that into that hole, and now you can either Mark those through the rivet fan. Take it out, punch them and drill them. Or if you're really careful and you don't mind replacing your rivet fan once in a while, you can simply drill those holes using that as a guide. But let me warn you, if you do that a lot, you are gonna enlarge the holes in your rivet fan and eventually it's not gonna be that precise of a tool. So that's the easy way to make a, a, a variety of holes with equal spacings along a line. Makes life really simple. That's laying out rivet lines. Thanks to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring the series and thanks to you for watching. Okay, oh, I don't have my rivet fan. Bumper, make the bumper longer.